some uh, video games that I used to be really into. Um, I have been played video games for a while, to be honest with you. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. For a while, my hand was like really hurting. I'm not sure why. I thought I had arthritis, but I don't think it was arthritis. <laughs>
SCVs, space construction vehicles. And those units that I just talked about are used to gather resources. So you need to gather resources to train an army. And then you uh, basically, if you, you build an army, and then once you kill all your opponent's buildings, you destroy all their buildings, you win the game. But you should keep in mind that most games are um, are won long before you kill all the opponent's buildings. Your opponent just gives up basically. You destroy their army, you still have a substantial army left. You kill a bunch of their buildings, and they're just like, screw it, I quit. They quit, and then you win. So, but um, now I used to play online, right? So, not just yeah, against the computer. Uh, all the games I'm going to talk about, I basically played online and I used to play for like seven hours a day or something like that, like something crazy. Maybe more. And um, so yeah, I should go into um, supply units because another factor of the game is big up this supply. Use your resources to build supply units and um, basically when you start off the game you might have like um, 10 supply or something like that and then that's okay because you start off with like five workers and that's five supply right there but as you start to grow an army and stuff like that Chip your units or your soldiers or your workers. Take up one or more supply. And then you basically need, I don't know if it's supposed to be like houses for them or if it's supposed to be like food for them. But you need to build more supply in order to have more units. Because you'll get, like, like I said, um, you have 10 supply when you start. And then you hit 10 supply because you make five more units. And then it'll say, you'll try to make another unit and it won't let you. It'll say, more supply depots needed, more overloads needed. <laughs> Stuff like that. Darren, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm explaining the races there, but I haven't even explained the races yet. Um, it's like, Darren, have supply depots. Zerg have overlords, which are like creatures that give supply. And um, Darren, uh, the supply depots are like buildings. Protoss have, um, uh, what do you call them? I can't think of crystals. Uh, pylons, I think they're called, right? It's been a while since I played, guys, sorry. So there's three races in StarCraft, right? There's Darren, who are like humans, but on another planet, I guess. Are fairly technologically advanced. They're kind of like us in a way. It's like they don't have any like... Um, how should I explain it? It's like they're kind of like us. Yeah, except more technologically advanced, I guess. And, um, yeah, so Darren and uh, then we have, like, uh, Zerg, who are, and uh, well, I should mention, like, Darren, they have, like, tanks and, uh, and uh, spacecraft and stuff like that with weapons on them. They have like infantry, they have like uh, soldiers with guns and stuff like that. But um, that's, that's Terran. Uh, there's Zerg, which are like aliens. Have you ever seen the movie Starship Troopers?
trooper. It's got like the. It's like they're kind of like, in a way, it's uh, maybe big insects or something like that. They're just like, they're um, uh, a lot of them are big, at least like human size or much bigger than humans. A lot of them have claws to attack with, or they spit stuff. Hygelus, they have like hygelus, which like spit stuff and they kill units that way. Um, they kind of like monsters, um, and um, so. Yeah, but um, so generally, if they have, uh, they're the cheapest units to make, and basically, so every unit costs a certain amount of resources to make, and basically how it works is, the more resources a unit costs to make, the better the unit is. But that's not to say that, a race that has more expensive unit, units is uh, superior to a race that has cheaper units. Because you can always just argue, well, like, okay, I can make, my units aren't as strong as yours, but I can make twice as many of them. And that's her, right? Like, some of the units like Ultralis, which are melee units, or I don't know brown section, melee, Units, which are like hand-to-hand -hand combat, they have these big claws on their arms. They have a lot of hit points. Okay, so hit points is like the health of a unit, because not every unit dies in one shot. You know, sometimes it takes, you know, you have to attack a unit for a while with your army. Well, not a while, but a relatively long time, I guess. battle to kill it and that might only be like I mean a couple of seconds but that matters in the heat of battle if it takes longer to kill a unit now um, protoss are what do you call them they're the most expensive units but they're also usually the highest quality units of course, like you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like these aliens as well, but they're technologically advanced. Like the Zerg are technologically advanced. They fight by spitting, clawing, hacking with their body weapons. Their weapons that are still on their body. And Protoss, very technologically advanced. But they're kind of different. They're kind of like psychic beings. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Protoss are really good. Uh, no, my favorite race was Protoss. And, um, and, uh, another thing you have to keep in mind in RTS is that there are building prerequisites. Because let's say you want to, you're a Zerg, and you want to make an Ultralisk, which is like one of the best units in the game, right? This has the most hit points, does the most damage. You can't just make an Ultralisk within the first minute of the game. You can't do that, because you need to make an Ultralisk den building to do that. And the Ultralisk den building has prerequisites. And one of the prerequisites is a hive. Because when you start the game, when you're Zerg, you're given like four or five drones that are used to harvest resources and make buildings. You have a hatchery, and you have to upgrade the hatchery to a layer. And you have to, after you get the layer, you have to upgrade it to a uh, hive. And it takes time to do that. It's not instant. And also, there are pre 
prerequisites to a layer. You have to make certain buildings. I forget what they are before you can upgrade, even upgrade to a layer. And you have to make certain buildings before you can upgrade to a high. And it goes like that for all the races. They all have prerequisites. So you can't just make the best building, best buildings or the best units right off the bat. <laughs> Now, let me just see where I am here. StarCraft was released in December 18th, 1988. And, uh, huge in Korea. And, uh, I'm not sure if they still do, but they definitely used to have, like, pro gamers. You used to make a living off of uh, StarCraft, and some of them would like live in these houses with just a bunch of other pro gamers and maybe some coaches. And they have like rooms full of computers and just gaming, I don't know how many hours a day, something crazy, <laughs> all day basically, just trying to be the best they could. <laughs> I actually saw a documentary on StarCraft players and they said something like once you turn 30 or something like that, but you, uh, your hand speed will start to slow down and stuff like that, which is kind of funny. You, you would think that doesn't affect, like your age doesn't really affect how well you can play the game. But apparently it does. And, Hand speed is very important. Like one of the um, one thing I've heard, I forget who said this, but it said something like your APM is like a measure of how effectively you can create, paint a picture in the game of StarCraft, something like that. So your APM is like actions per minute, right? So. If you click on one unit and move him so one one you place to another, that's an action. And let's say you have uh, something in a control group because control groups are important. What you do, like let's say you put your command center, which is like your uh, building that you make worker units out of. You can assign it all key. You can assign a hockey number one, which I used to do, for instance. And you can assign a group of uh, hydralists, for instance, for Zerg, which are like range units and decent range unit. You can assign them to uh, key group number two, so you can easily access them. So pressing the number one will be one action. Pressing them for the command center, or sorry, the I guess for a Zerg, that would be the hatchery, which would be like your command center, but... And then pressing number two for the hydralis would be another action. So that'd be two actions right there. So the number of actions you have per minute is called the APM, and that can be very important in like... Uh, because... Generally, the fat, the more higher your APM is, the better of a player you are at the game, generally. I had an APM about 100, which was okay, which was like maybe a, a bit above average. I think average APM would be, I'm not sure, maybe 60 to 80 APM. Now, a pro player's APM can be upwards of 380 actions per minute, so it's something crazy like that, you know. And, um, I thought I had an original point, I'm not sure what it was, but... But, um, yeah. But, uh, my favorite race was Protoss now, but if you click on the uh, units in the game, they kind of talk to you, which is cool. They are. Uh, one of them might say, I think uh, Cor uh, Protoss Corsair says, we're ready for battle. Um, every unit says something 
when they just uh, finish being trained. <laughs> Protoss Dragoons say, I have returned. And they say that I, I don't do any justice on ASMR. And you know, if it wasn't the ASMR, I guess I probably wouldn't do it any justice because it's a very cool sounding voice and it just sounds so much conviction in it. And This is um like Protoss dragoons. They used to be like not dragoons. They used to be um regular kind of soldiers, maybe zealots that were in battle and they got seriously injured. And so uh, they Protoss. They brought them back into battle by putting them in this four-legged uh, machine, which can shoot like kind of like these balls that damage opponents and uh, so they saying I have returned it's like I have returned to battle and it's pretty sweet the way they say that that's probably my favorite um, saying that a yeah, unit has when it gets trained I think that's pretty cool so Yeah, there are other ones that I like, for instance, um, I'll get to Warcraft 3 later, it's my favorite game, but, um, you know, of course, of course, Corsair say, it's a good day to die, and that's pretty cool, yeah, it's pretty hardcore, and, um, in Warcraft 3, when the undead lich is spawned, it says, the ancient evil survives, and it's pretty sweet, it sounds like a really epic. <laughs> And, uh, what was I gonna say now? Oh, I have no idea. No, let me just say, so, in, uh, RTS games, you have your macro and you have your micro. So, macro is like, um, uh, making, uh, making units, uh, training units creating supply buildings or supply units like over like Zerg overlords so you can there um, thereby make more units excuse me one sec so yeah macro is like like basically you wanted to spend all of your resources basically and then if you ever end up in a position where like you have no or more resources to spend it's like you have no resource to spend you, you do like your base gets destroyed and you have a couple workers and now you can't make any resources because you didn't to have like so be it like that's the game's probably gonna end long before that so basically like you can't any resources is like spend those resources so that your army is as big as possible or you've upgraded your units as much as possible and or you've Checked up, but you've climbed the techn technological ladder as much as possible so you can make better units and stuff like that. So that's kind of like macro. Um, just making buildings, making units and stuff. Micro is uh, so that's macro management, that's big picture stuff. Micro is like small, so um, make in battle, it's like uh, moving your units around basically and using them to the best of their abilities so basically what you want to do is you want to focus fire generally so gathering up like all your dragoons for instance and rotas and having them attack a single uh Darren siege tank will be an example of micro and then when one of your dragoon starts getting hit moving him back out of the line of fire to save that unit and then putting him back into battle after they've started attacking something else that would be an example of micro and stuff like that or sending a, a unit that's very damaged back to your base uh, so that you can heal him up and put him into battle later a later battle that'd be like micro so and uh, so micro and macro that includes
you to APM. Uh, it's both macro and micro. And uh, let me just see here. Uh, and different things can be done with micro, like especially in Warcraft 3, which is like surrounding units so that they can't move and attacking them. Uh, especially import units like heroes. I'll get into that in a sec. And, uh, or like when a unit's trying to run away, like blocking him, moving side to side slowly with a unit in front of that unit, blocking it so that you can keep firing at it at that unit you're trying to kill. So stuff like that. But, uh, but now as you get into Warcraft 3, so Warcraft 3, uh, is my uh, favorite game of all time. It's, uh, especially, uh, not only Warcraft 3, but Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. Yeah, so that was my favorite game. It's also an RTS, real-time strategy, just like StarCraft. It's not to be confused with World of Warcraft, which is like when you have, it's a MMORPG, massive multiplayer online role-playing game. I'll get into role-playing games in a bit, but... Um, and so it's not the same as War World of Warcraft. You in Warcraft 3 you have an army to control usually. Not just one guy. And uh, in Warcraft 3 you have uh, four races. So you have and it's based kinda of like in the past, I would say. And uh, you have Orc, you have Undead, you have Human and you have Night Elf. So, Orc are kind of like the pro joss of Warcraft 3 because they have like expensive units, but they're high quality units, I would say. I have a bit of trouble explaining the differences between the races in Warcraft 3. I don't, and uh, I guess I did explain too much about Darren in my explanation of uh, Starcraft, but. Um, yeah, uh, but I think it's, I have a bit of trouble, like, explaining, it's not as simple as just having, like, uh, one race is, like, the cheap units, which are, uh, it's not so much like that, there's a lot of, like, differences between the races, and, um, but I would say if I had to, if I had, was pressed, I'd have to say Orc has got, like, the Protoss of Warcraft 3, and uh, I used to play Undead, which is like uh, units that have died but were brought back to life, kind of like that. There's like skeletons and ghouls, and uh, there's like spiders and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I liked Undead a lot. And uh, I'm in, uh, in Warcraft 3, you have damage types. I don't know if they have that in StarCraft. Like, you had. Uh, Every unit has a different type of uh, damage. Some would be like normal damage or piercing damage or siege damage. And then every unit had a different armor type. And uh, there are some uh, types of damage that would deal extra damage to other da uh, to certain armor types. And then there are certain uh, damage types that would deal less damage to certain armor types and stuff like that. Like, and like for instance, the Night Elf Archer would deal extra damage to uh, Undead's armor type. So Undead, Crypt Fiend, that is not all the Undead. Uh, and the Undead, Crypt Fiend would deal less damage to the uh, Night Elf Archer because of the armor type. And I forget exactly which armor type it was and stuff like that. I think, um, yeah, but I saw that, and, the, and what you could say is that the Night Elf Archer counters the Crip Fiend, and so every unit kind of has a counter, and you have to know the counters um, to be able to play the game well, and so, but, um, but you also have to factor in movement, not just the armor types and stuff like that. For instance, I would say that now in tier one, now, uh, which
which is like in Warcraft 3, you have different tiers, right? You have your uh, kind of like your command center or your town hall. Humans have town hall, which is like their main building. And your main building is very important. You call it your main, actually. And um, humans have town hall. Uh, Night Elf have Tree of Life. Undead have Necropolis. Uh, Orc have. Um, what do you call it, I guess? Well, I'm not sure, but I forget. But And uh, you have to upgrade your town hall uh, so that you can build. Uh, climb up the tech ladder and build different buildings and use the different buildings to build different units and stuff like that. So, um, hang on a sec, I gotta get more food, sorry. Yeah, so I just got some more food and uh, to eat on this, so. Now, so, orc grunts are, do extra damage versus fiends. Because of their attack type and because of the fiends are over time. But, um, and then fiends don't do extra damage versus grunts. But grunts are melee, melee units, high time combat. And uh, they're kind of slow moving. And fiends are fast moving. Those are undead grip fiends. And uh, they have range attack. So what you can do is if you're somewhat skilled in mic with micro, you can keep on shooting a grunt, running back, and shooting a grunt, running back, shooting a grunt, so that the grunt can never catch you. But in tier two, everything changes. Because then the orc has the raiders. Then you can use the raiders to ensnare the, uh, what do you call it, ability called it ensnare. It's the, they throw a, a net over you, and then you, your unit can't move. So they can snare the fiends. And once the grunts get up to fight the uh, uh, fiends hand to hand, the grunts usually win. So. <laughs> So yeah, my favorite unit was uh, <laughs> uh, Undead Abominations, which are like these uh, uh, big, fat, heavily armored undead units. And they're just tough. And they have a lot of hit points. But um, I like units that were kind of tough because I, my biker wasn't fast enough to be able to use like ghouls very well. Ghouls are um, tier one undead unit, um, hand to hand combat, kind of weak, easy for opponents to kill them. But if you're fast, you can move them out of uh, the line of fire quickly and with them back and stuff like that. But you have to be so good with micro to do you. I wasn't good enough, basically. But, um, I would say there's a couple of main, the main difference between Warcraft 3 and, um, uh, Starcraft. Well, There's a couple of differences. One is that you have um, Warcraft 3, it's often like smaller armies. Uh, but um, compared to Starcraft, which is like you have a huge army. But uh, also in Warcraft 3, you have heroes. And in Starcraft, you don't. So you can have a maximum of three heroes in Warcraft 3. And. Uh, <laughs> And the heroes, and you can go around uh, killing creeps. And what that is is, it's not like um, it's not like a, some weird ASMR guy. Never did it. It's uh, no, it's like um, just kidding. 
that's actually playing the game against you. It's like uh, their computer. Uh, that's like they have these creatures in the game, and then you can they they hang out with these creep camps, and you can go there and you can kill them, and then they. to your hero, they give you gold, and uh, they give you items, so, yeah, and you can put the items, you usually can't put them on, you can't put them on most units, you can pretty much just put them on your heroes, and, uh, It's like you can go and uh, there's a punishment to be staying in your base, right? Because if you try to stay in your base and you try to make the best units you can before going out, somebody can help creep you going out or out in the cube camps. And even though you have like really good units, your opponent will have like a level six hero. Or not level, you can't get level six, but if you just hit creeps, but level five hero, which is a very strong hero. So, and when the opponent is uh, attacking creeps and busy doing that and, and taking damage, you can run up from behind him and creep shack him. So you start attacking him and then so the creeps are attacking your opponent and you're attacking your opponent and then you steal the items that the units drop. You take them and then maybe you get the last hit on a uh, one of the creeps and so you get the experience from that even though he did most of the work. And then you steal the item of course and you can do a different strategy like that. And but, um, let me just see where I'm, what I was going to say. Um, so you basically put a real time strategy. trying to create an advantage and there you can do that and then uh, there's several different ways to do that obviously one is just being better than your opponent when it comes to micro uh, but you can also gain an economic advantage and you can do that by expanding so you can, uh, there's more than one gold mine on the map in Warcraft 3. And, uh, you can, you start off at a gold mine with the command center or like a, your main is near the gold mine. But you can build additional, uh, gold mines basically. Mm -hmm. And start earning double the resources that your opponent is earning. And, uh, yeah, and so that's one way. And then you more resources means you can build more units or better units and you can overthrow your opponent that way um, and you know one race that's actually uh, really good at that is uh, human because human they can do something that um, the other races cannot do that's so they can uh, turn their peasants into their worker units into militia who have uh, more armor than the peasants do uh, are faster moving and deal more damage than regular workers do and they can use they can get a bunch of peasants together turn them into militia and uh, go over to a uh, new gold mine that is guarded by a creep camp that might have some uh, uh, somewhat different 
difficult to kill creeps there. Um, but kill the creep camp. Start up a base. And, um, mm. so yeah, so, uh, human are it's the easiest to expand when you're playing human. And, um, so, because, oh, okay, so gain the economic advantage. Another thing is, you can attack the opponent's economy by killing their workers. When we can do that is with the Ross. And um, it's kind of like when you're not using all your units to attack the opponent, you're just using uh, some of your units. Normally just your hero actually, but, or a handful of units to attack. You attack the uh, opponent, then uh, when the opponent comes and defends the base, you run away. Really great area unit. 
much deals lots of damage. You feel the squeeze against the orc, and it's like you don't really. The orc, just before that, I, I told you about grunts being worse than fiends in tier one, but even so, with the orc has like blade master or a hero, you can turn invisible and stuff like that, and deal crazy damage. And, and so the undead kind of feels a squeeze, and kind of feels that the orc really has the upper hand until like tier three. Uh, 
and then once you get more levels, you gain uh, skill points and stat points. And there's stat points. There's like dexterity. There's uh, there's mana. There's which is like spiritual energy that you can use to cast spells. If you have low mana, you can't cast many spells. If you have high mana, you can cast a lot of spells. There is um, dexterity, which is like the more you have, the more like you are to actually land your hits on your opponent. And the better your block rate is if you have a shield. There's strength, there's more like more strength, there's more damage. There is like health, vitality, more vitality is more hit points. So your unit is tougher. There's skill points in each of those different skills, like the sorceress has uh, three tech trees, or three trees of uh, you know, different skills. There's like, you can fire, they can shoot fireballs and stuff. Make hydras that come out of the ground and shoot fireballs. Three-headed monsters made of fire and stuff like that. Uh, frozen, throwing frozen, uh, frozen balls. Of ice at opponents, but so there's a fire, ice, and electricity. <laughs> then there's Necromancer, which can uh, revive corpses and uh, make skeletons. And the skeletons can attack opponents, or you can make like a golem, like a fire golem, like a tough unit made of fire, or you can make one out of a piece of metal. And uh, it would kind of have the properties of the metal item that you made, I guess. I think that's how it worked. Or a blood golem that's like linked to your life and stuff like that. And as the golem was a, da a damage, you would get damage as the golem a lance hits. You would, I think, uh, get more uh, health that way. And so you can curse people too right now when you're a necromancer. And then there's the paladin that has like hand to hand combat basically with the shield. Usually it has different auras, and your aura can increase or uh, buff you and your uh, allies. Uh, like you can do a fanaticism aura, which increases your damage and increases your attack speed for you and all your allies, which is pretty cool. And you have different uh, attacks, like uh, I think what's it called? Zeal. I think I might. Have been, I could be wrong, but it's like you do like five hits in a row, and you can you kind of like strafe or from side to side. Like you hit one guy, then you turn this uh, turn to the right, and you hit another guy. Or turn to the right, hit another guy that you're next to, and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And um, this barbarian. A lot of hand tank combat too, and with barbarian you can wield uh, a weapon that is you that uh, a weapon a two-handed weapon like the paladin has to use two hands to use like a great sword right, but the barbarian can put it use it on one hand and on the other hand have another great sword or something like that. So uh, I think that's how it worked. Yeah. but maybe not with all units. I don't think you could have like two big spears and stuff. But uh, and the barbarian has like war cries that you can use to like give you more uh, stats of some kind and uh, maybe like more, I think more hit points or something like that. And uh, barbarians are really cool and they have like a whirlwind where they spin around in circles or like they just spin around and they attack a bunch of, a bunch of units that are next to them. They spin around with the sword and stuff. And, and uh, then there's Amazon, who was really good with a bow, and uh, or javelins, or and stuff like that, or a spear, I think, too. Uh, and then you have uh, Assassin, who has hand to hand combat and uses claws. And there's certain uh, certain attacks where you can you can start charging up your like you hit once, and then there's a little ball starts encircling you. Hit him again, another ball starts encircling you, and then you hit, hit him with this other, hit him a third time, and then like, those balls, they disappear, and then they make your attack even stronger, and stuff like that. So, it's uh, pretty cool stuff, where you can set traps, set traps that shoot lightning bolts, and stuff like that, and 
Uh, then there's Druid, and Druid's like, um, again, uh, summon wolves, and, or stuff like that, yeah, summon wolves, or you can, uh, uh, turn into a werebear, or turn into a werewolf, or you have certain elemental attacks, like Armageddon, and I think it was, where there's like a hurricane, and it goes around you and damages the opponents and stuff. Uh, let me just see, I'm trying to explain all the... Yeah, I mean, I remember one time though, I was in trading in this guy, I was, you can trade in this game, right? And uh, you go up to a guy and then it shows a window where like you put stuff that you want to trade. And then there's another window where you, your uh, guy you're trading with put stuff that he wants to trade. And this, I was trying to get this certain, uh, Mace, which had like these special magical runes in it, and uh, and I guess the guy thought it was ridiculous that I was trying to get it because I didn't have good enough stuff to trade. So he started like insulting me and calling me down and stuff like that. And he started going way overboard, like maybe I didn't have enough to be able to trade for this item, but I don't think he should have been insulting me. But he went up to the trade window and he started beaking me and chirping me again. And then he put up this like really good armor, which was like, it was called a 160-60. And it was 160%. It had these jewels in it, right? It had these four jewels in it. And uh, it, the thing did 160%. And I put up this uh, club with some runes in it, which is like, it's an okay item, but it's far from being a great item. And I think he, he's lipping me off, and then he uh, clicks the accept button real quick. And uh, I, I see that, and I mean, I just click it. I think he wanted to. <laughs> and so the trade went through. We traded, and I got his armor, 160-60. And he got my, like, kind of crummy club. So immediately, like he was wondering what happened, and uh, I think he started. Like, <laughs> I can't remember actually what he said, but yeah, I remember he was being very upset because I think he was just trying to tease me by clicking the accept button. He didn't want to do that trade. He immediately saying he wants it back, and But I didn't give him the item back. Never did. Because he was so mean to me at the start. And, um, and then he started spamming me, started messaging me, saying, uh, I'm going to hack you and stuff like that. If you don't give it to me, it'll. But he never hacked me. And, um,. which uh, had a bunch 
bunch of damage reduction gear on it, like storm shields. And so, you would get the uh, damage reduced by, I think, 75%. And uh, so that was good when you're fighting um, non-magical attack, physical attackers like paladins and amazons and barbarians and stuff like that. And I put a lot of points in dexterity, so I had like a 75% block rate too. So I could take hits on my necromancer. And it was fun stuff. I had, uh, I forget the name of it, I think it might be a Ravenclaw or something, but it was a ring that you had, which it made it so you could not be frozen. When you're frozen, you're slowed down and it sucks, you know. So I would dual Amazons and I would have like max, um, also, uh, uh resistances. resistances to the elements like electrical or light um, what do you call it? Uh, lightning cold and fire and so you would take less damage you can have uh, different items that have like 10% fire resistance and stuff like that and I had a uh, full resistance to cold and plus I couldn't be frozen so I'd go in and uh, dis I had a, a, a skill it's called bone spear from with my necromancer which is like a, a kind of like a homing missile it's like a, you send a ghost at somebody it's like you can it's like a kind of and it tracks them it follows them around until it hits them uh, unless it times out but so it was pretty cool how we get like uh, fighting a sorceress and they'd be teleporting all over the place trying to avoid my bone spirits but I could get like 20 bone spirits following them just spam them I'd increased the um, cast rate too so I could cast spells faster than normal and just got like 20 bone spirits following them and I'd just switch my skill and just start spamming uh, bone prisons it's like a prison made of bones and so we like uh, lag them up and catch them up so they would start like slowing down and stuff like that and then when they started slowing down the bone spears would just hit them and all at once and kill them and it was sweet and um yeah, it was pretty sweet uh, with all the damage reduction and the 75% block rate and all the points I had in vitality. A barbarian could whirl, uh, a strong barbarian could roll in right through me and I could block 75% of the hits and take the other hits, but my damage reduction deer, like, basically, I could take more wins. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, it was a good time and, uh, I found perfect war travelers. War travelers was because so if you uh, a big part of that game is like kind of magic finding. So you have certain items that give you a higher chance of finding uh, unique items or set items or regular items. And um, I killed one of the bosses once, and he dropped uh, war travelers, which are like a magic uh, boots with magic find on them. And it was perfect, they were perfect, because you could get good pork or travelers, which have a high percent, or like, or maybe it, and anywhere between this certain percentage range here uh, for magic find. So I found perfect pork travelers, and I sold them for like 10 SOGs, which were the currency at the time, because we, we had uh, currency for trading items. At the time, it was a Stone of Jordan and rings, which is a unique ring, and um, so I, uh, I think I got 10 SOGs for that, Sons of Jordan, for that, those war travelers, which was a fair bit at the time, but I probably could have even got a bit more, but I remember one time on the game, I, uh, 
I purchased uh, 40 SOGs, I think it was, from a guy like on eBay or no way, it was, I think it was called calltheitems.com, but I'm not sure if they still have that website, but, and, uh, excuse me, uh, I think I might have been paid like 40 bucks or something like that for them, when I was like 12 years old or something like that, maybe young, yeah, and, uh, or maybe like 13 years old, I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, uh, I actually purchased SOJs with my own money, so I purchased a birch ride with my real money and stuff like that, so, but I did get a lot of enjoyment out of the game, but, um, yeah, my friend had a, it was called a meth bot, because there was a boss called Mephisto, and we drop good items, and, um, uh, you got this bot or this computer program which would take one of your characters with magic fine gear on them and like go and just kill the boss all by itself without you doing anything and kill the boss pick up the item stash the item away and you can run this computer program as bot all night and uh, when you wake up in the morning you have a bunch of high value unique items in your inventory and stuff like that so uh, my friend was doing that and eventually the game got there was a bunch of uh, hacked items on there that would do like um, uh, better benefits and higher attri better attributes than the regular unique items way better so but um but yeah the game was still it was still quite a good game uh what else should I say? Uh, maybe that's all for now. But good. Um, thank you for watching. Goodbye.